Good evening. Welcome to Athens City Council. Tonight is Monday, May 24th, 2010. This evening, City Council will be meeting in special session and then a series of uh, committee meetings thereafter. Special sessions, there's always a limited agenda, only those ordinances that are up for reading. Uh, we do have a quorum with six of seven members present. Ordinance 5210 is an ordinance amending Athens City Code Title 41, Site Plan Review. Member Fall. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move that we uh, accept 5210. Second. Um, we discussed this numerous times, um, including last week. Um, this will uh, change Title 41, the Site Plan Review process. Um, it's pretty much changing it to include new definitions, new requirements for things to be on the maps, um, and to encourage um, the, the redefinition of some of the um, things that are in the plan. And this was put through um, a, uh, this is a review of the ordinance after it was working for a year to a year and a half um, so that we could tweak it, make it better and easier for people to use. There are further discussion on Ordinance 5210. All those in favor of adoption of the ordinance? Aye. Opposed? The ordinance is adopted. Ordinance 5310 is an ordinance granting a revocable license to the owner of 55 Elmwood Place to replace an existing fence on the city right away. Again, member fall. Um, I move that we accept 5310. Second. Um, this is a, a fence that will be um, included. In Enclosing a um, pool that is there and it will be a 10-year revocable license. Further discussion on the ordinance? All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 5310? Aye. Opposed? The ordinance is adopted. Ordinance 5410 is an ordinance closing a portion of court, Washington, and State Streets from 7 a.m. on Saturday, July 17th to 1 a.m. on Sunday, July 18th, 2010 for a family music festival. Boogie on the Bricks, and Ohio Brew Week, suspending the enforcement of Athens City Code Title 13, Section 130410, Unnecessary Noise in the Downtown Area, and Title 7, Section 70526B1, which is the City Garage Metered Parking Rates and Regulations. Member Butler. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to adopt ordinance 0 Second. Um, basically, uh, this ordinance is an uh, annual event that takes place in Athens on the noted date there. Um, specifically, this is Boogie on the Bricks and Ohio Brew, Brew Week, the combination of the two. And we're looking at um, the unnecessary noise, uh, amending that temporarily, and uh, the garage metered parking rates. Thank you. Further discussion? Yes, Member Sands. I just wanted to point out, Member Butler mentioned it, but um, amending the city garage meter parking rates means that for that afternoon and evening, there's no charge for parking in the garage. We're amending it to make it free. Yes. yes. Thank you. Other comments? Yes, Member Galtzny. Along those same lines, this will not amend the unnecessary noise law in the city. It will simply suspend it for that event. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for clarifications on that. All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 5410? Aye. Opposed? The ordinance is adopted. Ordinance 5510 is an ordinance amending Ordinance 0410, authorizing the mayor to extend the current contract with Lakefront Lines, Inc., and declaring an emergency. Member Nisley. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for adoption of 05510. Second. Okay. Thank you. This ordinance allows us to extend the contract that we have with Lakefront Lines. This is for the operation of our uh, interurban bus system. The current route is between Athens and Columbus. We would be expanding that route as well as beginning a new route. Hopefully this will all happen this summer. Uh, the new route would be from Athens to Cincinnati. And this, uh, this agreement allows us to continue the contract with Lakefront until the new agreement's in place. Further comments? All those in favor of adoption of Ordinance 5510? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance is adopted. The next item on our agenda is adjournment. Now we move on to the Safety Services Committee. Member Coon. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, does anybody need a copy of the 
most recent draft. I think there was one in your box and it was emailed, but if I have copies. Oh, okay. Here have three. Three. Here, would you like the comparison to with the, uh, okay. Does anybody else need a need a copy? Well, since the noise ordinance was the proposed uh, amended noise ordinance was last on the safety committee agenda, two uh, additional committee members were added, two more students were added, and we've had two meetings, two ad hoc committee meetings uh, since then. There was um, a lot of discussion about various things. Uh, concessions were made. Um, and the final draft that we have tonight represents quite a compromise. There was uh, much discussion about several things, including times, uh, how many warnings there should be. Um, there were a few changes, though, that were not controversial, and one of them was referring to the service safety director as he or she instead of just he. So that's that's taken care of in this final in this final draft. Um, the penalty section of the new proposed ordinance has been toned down quite a bit since from the previous drafts that we looked at. Um, the reason for this is that this really isn't about punishment or making money for the city, even though that's not a bad thing. Um, but it's just about having respect for each other and um, living together in uh, in neighborhoods and everybody showing respect for each other. And so I don't know if you've had a chance to really look at the new proposed ordinance, but are there any comments so far? Law Director Lang, I know that you've reviewed it. Is it okay? I, I have. <coughs> I just uh, thank you for getting me the, this advanced copy here a, a couple of days ahead of time. I appreciate that. Um, it's certainly a very comprehensive ordinance for those that haven't had the time to, to go through this. It addresses several uh, kinds of situations. It actually makes reference both to trains and to steam engines. And, uh, in <laughs> just in case, so you just, never know. Just in case we get some <laughs> stimulus money and put in light rail. Uh, it would be a great day for it. <laughs> um, but uh, in all seriousness, it's uh, the legal concerns which I had raised, particularly as they pertain to the penalty section, those have, have been addressed. Um, I guess just one general note that I would uh, say on this, and of course, uh, you know, when I review ordinances, I'm not reviewing them for, you know, uh, content or, or, you know, things uh, of that nature or whether it's something that I agree with. I'm uh, merely reviewing uh, an ordinance for uh, its enforceability you know, or its prosecutability. And I guess just one general caveat that I would put out there, um, one thing that I do like to, uh, to see, and I think this is probably a result of what you had just alluded to, Member Poon, when uh, you talk about uh, some of the compromises uh, which were made in committee on this, and that's uh, certainly a good thing. It's a way to get um, you know, legislation that, uh, that multiple uh, viewpoints can agree on, although oftentimes one of the risks that you run uh, in doing that or one of the unintended consequences is having language that is less than clear. And I guess I, I just raised one specific example here, and I'll just go ahead and read this out loud because I had had a little difficulty understanding it myself the first few times through. I think we all agree that laws have to be written in such a way or should be written in such a way as that uh, so average citizens can understand what they mean and uh, that average uh, law enforcement officials can be able to to enforce those fairly and, and across the board. I'm pleased to see, uh, number one, uh, on the, uh, speaking of the warning issue on subsection J, I'm pleased to see that the ordinance speaks directly to this. Um, oftentimes, or not oftentimes, but sometimes in the past on other issues, uh, we've had situations where certain uh, individuals have said, well, you know, we're going to write something a certain way in the ordinance, but we're going to, uh, in practice, we're going to enforce it a different way, or we're going to have our own internal standards for how this is applied. And, you know, a lot of times that can get us into trouble just because then it's up to the individual officer as to whether or not we're going to enforce the law as it's written or whether we're going to uh, to impose some other standard, some personal uh, you know, standard. And, and so I am pleased to see that it is it's spoken to, uh, you know, directly in the ordinance. Uh, although, I, and again, I'll just, just read this. This is Section J, warning preferred. Enforcement will be complaint-based with law enforcement officers taking measurements as prescribed. 
Warnings shall be given for initial violations occurring during any 24-hour period that occur between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. each Sunday morning through Thursday night and between 7 a.m. and 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. Warnings are not required where the address and or individual have been issued two or more warnings and or citations during the current calendar quarter. Violations falling between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. Sunday evening through Friday morning or between the hours of 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. Friday evening through Sunday morning that are prima facie violations return calls to the same address within a 24-hour period and vehicles which the officer believes is inciting pedestrians or other vehicles for no lawful purpose. Now, again, I certainly applaud, uh, you know, the effort to, to try to nail this down in ordinance form, and I guess I, I would just caution that if this passes in its current form or in some form substantially like it, there's certainly going to have to be a lot of um, education involved so that people can understand, you know, the various time frames involved and when they're getting warnings versus when they're just going to be cited on the spot. Uh, but overall, I, I think that this is certainly, uh, you can and certainly tell that uh, a lot of thought has gone into this and a lot of hard work on behalf of an awful lot of people. I, yes. I certainly applaud that hard work. Thank, Thank you. you. President Myers. The only uh, thing I would ask you to speak to is a bit of a conversation that we had uh, a few minutes ago regarding the time frame of how you expect uh, this to follow uh, through council. I had been um, reluctant to pass this while the students are gone in the summertime. However, I sort of, I, I, I'm sort of on a roll right now, <laughs> and and so I really would like to bring it forth as an ordinance and have one reading before the students leave, and then um, I would be willing to table it until the fall. If, are there any comments on, on that? I'll, I'll just comment and say that that sounds reasonable to me. If by having the first reading, um, it will make public yes. what's what's being proposed, yes, and exactly. then um, people can <coughs> think about be it during, about during it. that time right. yes. and, and be ready to discuss it in September. In, in September, yeah. right. Uh, member nicely yes thank you i think that seems like a reasonable time frame to have a first reading now to alert people bring up further concerns okay. i had one other quick question and that is that um, the top it, it, top of page two on our copy where we define calendar quarter mm -hmm. and just a question about what happens with process when the university switches to semesters will we then amend this to you know, like that's that, a good question. I'm not sure it would be necessary to amend it because it's it's calendar quarter. It's not university okay. quarter. Okay. Um, Law Director Lund, that, that do you, true. what do you I think about that? I think you got the nail on the head. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any other comments from Member Butler? Thank you. Um, I appreciate, um, Member Kuhn, I appreciate your um, tweaking and working with more students and getting two more students on, on the, uh, the ad hoc committee and having some more meetings and working towards compromise. I really appreciate that. Um, I was curious about the, uh, and I was wondering if there was clarification or maybe discussion about outdoor performances. So under B, section B12. Okay, you're looking at the comparison. I'm looking at the comparison chart. Mm -hmm. what page it's, is that? And I think it's the third page at the very bottom. It acknowledges that the production or presentation uh, outdoors in a residential zone by an amplified live band or any makeup or indoors when plainly audible. Mm -hmm. So I guess I was just curious about that and maybe um, was, was hoping to hear a little more discussion on, on that end of it. I know there's been concern expressed in by various neighborhood associations and, and people with families uh, and non -fam you know, people without families as well too that have expressed concern about bands, um, but is this also falling under the need, it would, it, it would have to be uh, complaint-based, is that correct? Right, um, it's complaint-based, okay. but, but they are prohibited outdoor and residential zones, um, live bands are prohibited. Okay. But you're right, com it is still, com the ordinance is still complaint-based. So. 
Um, so does that, and I'm looking for clarification here, does that mean that if anyone has amplified music, um, they're, they're potentially dancing on uh, some... If, if someone complains and the officer responds, uh -huh. and um, I, think it's, I think it states that it has to be clearly audible, or plainly audible, maybe it is, plainly audible. I think it's 50 feet from the source or the property line, whichever is farther away. Okay. Um, and the officer cannot, it has to be just his ordinary hearing. Sure. It can't be, he can't have a hearing aid or, you know, sure. something. I so, so correct me if I'm wrong as well, too, then, that um, this could be during any hours. So it, so it could be um, if there's a concern about ampl amplified music and it's... Um, even before 11 p.m. Um, on, a, on a Friday or a Saturday, or I'm sorry, on a, was it, the hours were, was it say, seven, 11 to 7? On uh, right, 11 to, Friday? It's 11 to 7, it's 11 to 7 on 7 um, um, uh, Friday and Saturday nights. And then the other nights are, it's um, 9 okay. to 7. And, and, and this is tricky, I have to admit. I mean, there's, there's probably people wrestling uh, uh, or shaking their fist at me uh, out there in TV land because um, on, on one level this sounds, in my, in my opinion, it sounds somewhat cantankerous and, uh, and anti-creative. But on another level, there have been a lot of complaints about noise related to music and amplified music. It's, it's different to uh, be playing uh, guitar on the front porch um, compared to plugging in with huge amps that are heard from miles away. And we've heard a lot of people speak to us about tolerance and also um, some people have shared their horror stories right. about um, not being able to put their babies to bed exactly. and, and exactly. not being able to sleep when they have to get up in the morning and exactly. go to work and they have to go out in their pajamas and track down the source of the noise and so forth. So hence the reason for the compromise. So, so the compromise was... Um, well, we talked a lot about times. Okay. You know, what time. Um, a lot of people thought 9 o'clock was too early. Um, some, you know, there were just a lot of different opinions. And so um, there was a, a lot of discussion about times and warnings and, yeah. and that sort of thing. Thank you for sure. your, your input. Anybody else? Anybody from the... Uh, safety director, safety service director. Stepping right into it. It's my understanding that this, um, right now, police officers don't require a complaint and can shut down loud, you know, music that they encounter. And this will tie it to a complaint. So I just wanted to point that out to you. There's some, some changes here. The other thing was, and I, I haven't got dealt to that level, is that, uh, Right now, the noise ordinance is in effect 24-7. Does this not tie it to times? So. I, I thought that um, it was kind of a dual. It, um, right now, the noise ordinance is in, is, um, in force 24 hours a day, but um, there are times between midnight and 7 a.m. on the weekend where if an officer hears things, then they can go and give a, a ticket. But before that time, like during the daytime, that was the complaint. So it's kind of a dual, um, a, a dual, and the complaint wasn't just calling up anonymously and saying, I have noise. It was making an actual police complaint. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess maybe that's the question is, is this making it more of, like now at, you know, 11.54, you can call up the police and say, you know, the neighbors are being really noisy. Could you do something about it? And that can be anonymous. But if it was at 7 o'clock in the, in the evening, you would have to leave your name and number and potentially have it go on public record. That's what I was um, brought to understand with talking with, with some people. So is, is this making it so it's all can just, you call up and there, you don't need to leave your name and it's not public? Because it's I know people who call a lot more, but they're concerned about having their name as 
public record and potentially if it went to court you'd be called as a witness and so that, that's there's difference between level of complaint I think that we need to clarify okay let me make it when the retaliation is is written in as well here no person shall direct a verbal physical or electronic act against the person family or property of any individual who complains of or witnesses a violation right but right now you you have to kind of do a formal swearing out of it because I've I've asked before like during the day um, that it's it's a higher it's more of a loop for the person who's complaining to jump through than just calling up at midnight and saying my neighbors are still at it can you come and shut them down there's do you see what I mean mm -hmm. there's different levels and if you have to swear out a complaint that's potentially putting you would have to go to court they decided to take it to court and swear out and be a witness and such it was so. my understanding and I'll and I'll clarify this before we bring it forward it was my understanding that you could just call in complain without having to be specific even right and if the officer goes to that area and finds um, a source of noise then they can handle it from them on right. that you don't have to be that you don't have to be involved in it but I think so. that needs just to be because there's different okay. levels of complaints. So, so, you know, another thought I had, I guess, about this outdoor performance aspect, it is, um, you know, our residential zones are where people live and where they um, are sleeping and getting ready for work and and um, raising families and or uh, preparing for class and. I, I guess what I'm, if I read between the lines, this is encouraging musicians that want to plug in to seek other venues or outlets, um, whether that's uh, an indoor facility or non-residential zones, or perhaps to work with the university to begin uh, events that may not ha currently exist to pursue perhaps uh, musical performances on campus um, if the university wants to support that. So I guess as I read or look into this, it's acknowledging that our residential zones are... Residential. Correct. Exactly. Right. Mayor? So um, a couple things. This Section J you're talking about, warning for third. Mm -hmm. So this is for all the noise um, events. I mean, any noise violation, you give a warning for third between the hours. If you're at you know, 12 noon, mm -hmm. warning for everything. A warning. A warning would be required at 12 noon. For somebody, let's say, Jake break in or loud cars. Right. A warning so they, would be required. So they right. come to once a quarter. They just get a warning. So right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, there, you can have two warnings a quarter. Two warnings a quarter. Per address or person. How, okay. So what about the cars and yelling and things like that? I mean, if the address is not the same. Horns and signaling devices, automobiles, bus trains. Uh, if I start making noise on my car, two warnings. Noon, if two I warnings. Lean on my horn in Court Street, I get a warning. For right, you get a warning. That's right. You get two warnings per quarter, no matter quarter. per person or address. Two warnings per quarter. Per car. I well, I don't think we can cite the car. Well, uh, I'm, I'm just mayor. Have we had a warning for a vehicle in the past? 10, 20 years? I don't think that's a question for the police. I really don't think so. I Actually, I they have stopped cars that are, you know, the revving and the, mm -hmm. yeah, the big booming speakers, so they do do that. So I do, do want to share with you, you know, that at least for two weeks in a row, noise complaints were the highest call for service, you know, exceeding 30. So you've got your patrol officers expending, you know, that and going out and, and shutting, you know, locating these areas and what have you. I'm not sure about the anonymous um, records either, Sherry, so I think we need to get to check on that. Yeah, okay. um, you should know when you call the police department, you know. <laughs> they're being recorded. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. right. But it doesn't go into our... That's going to kill me for that one. Don't <laughs> so. uh, this is what I was told by the police officer. Okay. I think it needs to be looked at. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to check on that. The definitions. Yeah. Right. So if I if somebody complains about my lawnmower, I can only can I get two warnings, and then after that I get a ticket for driving my lawnmower. Right. That, that's one of my personal pet peeves. Right. Okay. So and, the, and they and they have to have a muffler 
on them. They can't just you can't just be mowing your yard without a muffler on your lawnmower. Okay, but if it's too loud, somebody complains. I get a warning. You get a warning. I do it the next week. I get a warning. Right. I can't cut my lawn anymore. And now you're going to get a grass. Now you're going to get a grass. I'm sorry. But then, right. then I get a goat. And I can't get a goat. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm just trying to figure out how this works with the warning mm -hmm. situation. I'm trying to figure out how the transient sure. noise violation actually can be tracked. And Goats and chickens, you know, we can work that in. <laughs> that was one of the concerns of the ad hoc committee was how did the police department have the ability to keep track of who gets the warnings oh, when it's when you've exceeded your warning limit. Mm -hmm. And they say they can, that they're not doing it right now, but that they will have the ability once this is passed to do that. Okay. So do you, I'm just trying to visualize this. So. So, are there any, does anybody in the audience wish to say anything? Mayor? I'd like to thank the ad hoc committee for all the work, too. Right. Thank you. They, they've really worked hard. Thank you and everybody. Jim? If you'd come and state your name and address. Uh, Joe Fernandez, 56 Mound Street, and I was a member of the ad hoc committee. I was hoping I wouldn't have to say anything. I was hoping Chief Meyer would be here and he could just <laughs> fill you in on everything. But um, um, I would like to, well, I would like to say this first, that um, um, all, many of the difficulties were resolved in the process, I think we had three or four, we were just talking about it, we think we had three or four meetings on the second go. Um, at least three, maybe four, we're not even sure ourselves, right? We've had a lot. We have, we've had a lot of meetings and um, the group was mixed, four residents, four students. One of those students, who was a student and representing students, was also representing the local band scene because the person from the local band that was asked from council to be on the committee uh, couldn't make it and he suggested this person represent local bands, but she was also a student. Um, so there was a lot of representation on the committee. Cool. I think that uh, there were, um, and we pushed each other a lot and I think that um, Chief Meyer was a great listener and clarified things constantly for us because you would be reading things and you would see it from your perspective and he would have to stop us and say, no, this is what it says. So I think he knows this thing inside out. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we actually initially met um, um, when we did the first ad hoc and it we determined everything by consensus. Oh, there were other members on the committee, University uh, Student Services, the, a rep was there, and Sherry was always there with comments, and, um, and the co-director And the co-director was there. So we had a pretty full table. Um, and then there came a point, just so you can understand that we really worked a lot of these issues out, and um, when we met for the second time, and it was, four students okay. and four neighborhood representatives. We went to this vote thing for two meetings. And um, I, w I was very uncomfortable with that because it was a four and a four vote. And it was like, well, this is not making any sense. And I said, you know, this really is not working. Prior, we did this consensus thing and we, and we would work everything out. So at the very last <coughs> meeting, we switched to consensus and we were able to come to terms with all of our issues. And I don't think everybody was totally satisfied but I think that we found that in representing um, those members of the community that have difficulty with the noise, some members of the community have very little difficulty with the noise. Uh, some students have absolutely no difficulty with the noise, but some students do have a lot of difficulty with the noise. Um, and um, there was a student at the, um, uh, com last community center meeting who sat next to me on the very committee that talked about the noise ordinance and and he was very concerned about it and had a lot of issues and after the meeting he 
we talked for a while and very quietly and sheepishly, he said to me when I lived in North Lancaster, I had to call the police two times on the people that lived next door to me. I just couldn't stand it anymore. And yet he was there speaking against it, but he actually used it. And then he moved out of the neighborhood up to courtyards, so he could move away. But as I said to him, you know, as residents, homeowners, we can't just pick up and let our car move away, right? And that was our concern. So, so it's kind of interesting what people come out, what come, comes out in all of this. Um, I would like to say something. So anyways, I think that we did, a, we did a, a, a really marvelous job considering all the obstacles that were placed in front of us. Um, and um, it, it was good to do some bantering like that. Um, one of the things I'd like to say about uh, the complaint-based time and the complaint-based time is, in the new ordinance, Sunday to Thursday before 9 p.m. And then on Friday and Saturday before 11 a.m. Uh, 11 p.m. P.m., thank you. Where's Chief Meyer when I need him here? <laughs> um, you do have to give an address, and that was part of the problem, was you not only have to give an, a location of, of, <coughs> of the complaint that you're complaining about, you would have to appear in court in order for the judge to take that forward. And so by lowering the times to 9 o'clock, and we assume that Mayor Weil will not be mowing his lawn after 9 o'clock, um, and if he does, then he should get a complaint. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So anyways, one of the things in terms of the complaint-based times was it was then it was difficult that, you know, you had till 11 o'clock and you were, you know, I, after that, if you called in a complaint, you didn't have to give an address, and you still don't now. You just call in and say, in this vicinity of North Congress, there's an incredible amount of noise coming, you know, people screaming, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we lightened that load on people that want to make a complaint. And uh, when, it, when it came to the warnings and tracking, I was particularly concerned about being able to track that. So it's like every quarter, January, February, March, then then your record's clean, and you go again, um, April, May, and June, and how, how were they ever gonna track that? But uh, Chief Meyer assured us that they would be able to track that. One of the students' concerns in terms of, um, of um, audible noise and the way we did it in terms of um, the property line was because some students complain in an apartment complex. And so where is the property line? And so the property line is your wall, and so we put the property line back in there. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Sherry. So that students living in apartment buildings, when they want to complain about the neighbors next door, they can do that. Um, I think um, um, that's all I want to say except that I, um, I, w I know that the students are leaving, but I really think we had a lot of student participation in this event, um, this whole process. And I would personally prefer that we went through with the second and third readings, because if we stop this process after the first reading, then we come back in September, and it's a month before it even gets voted on, and we spend all of September dealing with what we've just experienced the last month in terms of the noise. Um, so um, that's my proposal. I appreciate what Sherry said, and I know there was a concern with the students not being here, but um, if all of the uh, residents went out of town for the summer, would you hold this off for us? Um, I guess that's what I want to say. So thank you. Thank you. Did anyone else wish to comment? Oh, Member Nicely. One option, taking into consideration Joan's recommendation that we have had significant student input 
discussion throughout the year is if we end up with a special session in June, which when we talk about transportation committee related items, we may ha end up needing to have a special session, that that might be an opportunity to do a second reading and to pass this in June while the students are still here. Just a thought. Okay, thank you. Hello. Um, I mean, it's clear there was a huge amount of compromise and, yes. and an incredible amount of work that's put into this, and I really appreciate you know, everyone that was involved and, and your leadership on that, Sherry. Thank you. Um, from what I was seeing, to be honest, I haven't had a chance to read over this incredibly well yet and compare it to the existing notes ordinance, but it seems like there are a lot of good things in here. Okay, um, good. I do think we should hold off on, on voting on this or even going past the first reading until the students are, are back back in town. <laughs> I, I think it's important. There, there was a lot of student input from a small number of students, but I think it's important to have the opportunity for them to, to give us input um, you know, for the 20,000 students that were not a part of drafting this. Um, so I, I think we should, in good governance, wait until, until they're here in, in the fall. Thank you. Anybody else? Member Butler. Thank you. Um, not to belabor this or beat a dead horse, but um, I have a few more comments. Um, I might slightly disagree with Member Gosney that there are students present on campus. There's two summer sessions, so there will be an opportunity for students in town to comment on this. And every one of us on council can be contacted uh, electronically with any concerns or ideas. And I know this will be in the news and in the media if there are um, comments that, that students might have. Um, but I, I, I hear what he's saying. As an artist or having a degree in art, I, I do wrestle a little bit with the possible limitations on any kind of creative endeavor. So that is something I do wrestle with a little bit. But conversely, I have, and this is a, this is a, a point that has um, stuck with me that, that has been made on more than one occasion. And that is conversations I've had with graduate students and students um, seeking uh, PhDs and or med, med degrees, people who did not do their undergraduates in Athens, who are here for the first time, and the comments that they've made to me about the noise in Athens, that, that they did not experience that in their uh, undergrad experiences outside of Athens. And, and that stuck with me because um, what kind of town, what kind of community do we want to create here? So I do wrestle with this um, because, like I said, Having a degree in art, I don't want to limit creative opportunities and endeavors that music might entail, but I also know that um, it gets a little outrageous around Athens when amplified noise and music is invading the, the rights and privacy and space of others. So I, I do hear both sides of this. Thank you. Anybody else? Just, Member just a quick comment. Um, Member Butler has mentioned several times um, amplified sound, but if you look at um, section C, um, it says sound generated by devices or instruments is prima facie unlawful for a person to generate or permit to be generated sound by, by above instruments during the hours that we were talking about, uh, 9 to 7. So there's limitations on unplugged Right, that's true. Guitars on the porch also. That's true. That high school band member practicing his trumpet. Okay. Or his clarinet that was on me. the porch. <laughs> yeah. Mayor? Well, last the uh, uh, city website had a draft of this on the front page for everybody to look at. Great. Yes. Okay, we'll check on a few things if nobody else has. Yes. would state your name and address, please. My name is Robin Jones, and I live at 197 West State Street. Um, I was also a member of the Ad Hoc Noise Committee um, with Sherry and Joan. And um, along, and I know John and I had talked about this on Friday, and I believe we are putting up a resolution for Student Senate uh, for this coming Wednesday to urge City Council to table the resolution until the fall. Um, primarily because obviously we know noise is a problem here um, and we know that this noise re or noise ordinance needs to happen and it's not just 
a reaction to the fest, but we feel like right now, because of all the fests going on, that a lot of people are in that fest mindset. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think that um, a lot of it, like it may seem okay now for students and for community members, but I think a lot of what we worry about is maybe over the summer we think about things and then we're like, well, maybe that was too harsh and maybe this was what should have been done. And I think um, we as students and especially as committee members, the student committee members would prefer um, to kind of have the summer to kind of mull it over to think about it. I won't be returning next year, but three out of the four, the other three students on the committee will all be returning next year. Um, and so to kind of like use the summer to think about it and everything and kind of get out of the fest mindset and really think about the noise issue in general and the just general party atmosphere. So okay. I guess that's it. Thank you. Okay. I don't have any miscellaneous. Oh, or I do. Do I'm sorry. You, okay. <laughs> um, any day now this week, or at the latest Memorial Day, we're going to put institute a no left turn from Dairy Lane. It's it's gotten to that point in the construction. Um, in a few weeks after that, it'll be a closure anyway on Richland to get through this uh, bridge redecking. So. We do have some um, memorial services up there on Memorial Day to get to the ridges. <coughs> um, but I think we'll go ahead and get the signage up so everybody's prepared and can adjust. We'll have public service announcements. Okay. Thank you. Mayor? The other thing is I gave you a, a letter, and I'm going to put it in, uh, because actually it does affect city services, safety services. It did actually address to myself, uh, Pat Kelly, the Board of Commissions of Athens County, and, my, uh, and Chief Proxel. It's basically a request uh, a possible donation of land for public purposes. Uh, this is land off of along Harmony Road, 66 acres. I believe you have a chance to look at I gave it to you um, mostly because the letter, if you read it in the last paragraph, asked for some uh, response before June 1st, and I know you're not meeting before June 1st. Um, the, um, essentially, the land is the, uh, interested in donating land for us for both the Sheriff's Department and all the fire departments uh, with the idea of actually developing that on Harmony Road. This is, uh, I suspect, if I look at the plat correctly, somewhere on Harmony, close to it, or part of Brent Hayes' property. We have no utilities out there. Um, I know addressing the fire, I'm asking because I want input from you guys. Uh, one side of it. Um, but before you, I ask for that, I would point out that uh, in the conversations we've had about fire stations, it's felt that this would be too far east in general for a fire station. Uh, we, the Kramer Report of 1999 talked about the far east side not being serviced well and suggests, of course, a one point the third fire station. But to eliminate one of our fire stations, like the one on Columbus Road or Richland, would not service the south end property. So I point this out as even though it would be connected to a highway, not directly connected since Harmony Road is off Route uh, 1532. But uh, I was asking, I'd, I'd like to get your input along the way on this. I don't know if you had a chance to look at this. I sprung it on you as it was sprung on me from uh, last week. Thank you. Well, wasn't Paul Logue um, getting together some figures for us regarding response times and where would be the best place to have a fire department? Yes, we have so. uh, the GIS, uh, Ilgard GIS, looking at that. Trying to mm -hmm. that together. Right. Um, again, the 1999 one, uh, question of how accurate it was is another you know, matter, but um, what you're seeing in that time, the Far East Side and the uh, area to the south of uh, 56 and 682 as well, ill-served. Uh, not so much the original area, but towards the University of States area. Uh, and I think that was a four-minute response time that was questioned, whether we could get there within four minutes. He is working on that. I have not seen, I don't know where the progress is at that point. I think that they're doing is compiling all the response times of all the fire calls we've had in the past couple of years and mm -hmm. seeing how long it takes to get from point A to point B. Again, I, I look at this as not suited for us, but again, uh, it, I'd be remiss if I did not bring it to your attention. Okay. Thank you. And just one other quick note is that um, the fire chief has submitted an application through stimulus funds for over $900,000 in funding for replacement of our aerial ladder truck with a very good letter of support from a high university. Oh, so right. Well, that hopeful. is good news. Well, we won't know until we'll be lucky if we know in November. Mm -hmm. 
deadline for the application was 26, 27, 28, 28. We got it out today. We got it out today. So we're, we're good to go. We All just right. have to wait now. And Let's see what happens. Terrific. Yeah. So maybe we'll pay your fine. So yeah. Um, presently, this has no, the piece of property has no access to services, right? Sewer, um, water. Harmony Road is serviced by the LEAX. Okay. That's actually their water district. Um, we are pretty much bounded on that end by LEAX and Tuckers Plain. Mm -hmm. Tuckers to the east. I know Harmony and Terrell Road is, is LEAX. And, and sewer, it would... There is no sewer service. Okay. Today, uh, sewer because it's the across food. the river, it would be very expensive to... Under yeah. the rivers, under the highway, through the woods, yeah. grandma's house, et cetera. And um, I, I have concerns of, um, you know, putting, there's presently, um, you know, not much over there. And it just seems to be very, very out of the, the area of, that needs to be serviced by the fire department. So. The largest section we have now that with the longest response time would probably be University of State's area. Or this that south that southwest vector, and again, we comprehensive plan talks about going in that general direction. So yes. we we're talking about trying to enhance any of our fire protection. That's probably the general direction we should consider. Not that we can expand our fire protection that much. Consider, and that's all I really have in terms of this. Okay. okay, that's all for the safety committee. Then. Okay, finance and personnel committee. Um, we have several miscellaneous items, and I, one of them was going to be what the mayor just talked about. Um, this, this I land. jumped into this one. Yeah, so, so um, auditor, did you have something to talk about? So. Okay, then I think the service safety director does. It's kind of a, um, an information sharing. Um, the uh, Hawking Athens Prairie Community Action Agency has received grant funding for their summer youth program. Um, they're sending the letter out today, but she did call me in advance to give me some more detail. They have funds to place 150 kids from ages 14 to 24 at various sites within the county, city and county. They have to be income eligible, which is um, actually fairly high because it's 200% of the poverty level. She gave me an example, $30,000 for one person. But they must have a minor in the household or be an eligible minor in the household. And they have to participate for a minimum of six weeks. They're looking to... Uh, She's got at least 50 available, um, work 35 to 40 hours a week. Uh, the community action through this grant will cover their workings comp and their payroll. It does require a supervisor and some reporting requirements. We're looking to place some of these youth at the, with the community center and recreation departments as a start. Andy Stone may also want some um, in some of his serve, in a service garage. So. I'll be bringing, I don't know if, there, I believe there'll be some sort of contract or something that we'll have to sign, and I'll bring that forward when we have that. So are you putting this out as information to business people, et cetera? That's on community action. Um, I think they like to have a service component in this, and there's plenty of you know businesses I understand what you're saying. I don't know what the requirements are in terms of being But if people were interested, that. it would behoove them to sure. contact um, Hawking Athens Perry Community Action. Is there a, is there a person? Um, Jessica Stroh is who's contacting me, but she's actually technically still on maternity leave, but it hardly seems that way since I hear from her every week, and she's also you know assisting with the mobility management. But. Somebody at, at the okay. one should be able to do that. So. Thank you. I don't. I don't think so. I think it's a rare things. day when we don't need money. Man. Today. <laughs> Quick, we'll close this video. <laughs> <laughs> Transportation. Well, my <laughs> item <laughs> might involve some money, um, and you might recall that at a previous committee meeting we had talked about this issue. Um, and this has to do with city income tax. Um, so this will be one of four agenda items that I have tonight. Um, within the current city income tax, there's a one-tenth of a percent that's designated for streets and safe streets and bikeways. And this one-tenth of one percent expires on December 31st, 2011. Transportation Committee is proposing a ballot issue of an additional 0.12% for this November's ballot, and this would be to begin on January 1, 2011. 
for an additional uh, for additional improvements to streets and bikeways and pedestrian paths. Um, the intent is that this 0.12 um, would pay for things that we have need of uh, repairing, such as the Oxbow Bridge, Columbus Road, Grover Street Slip. Also for um, possible bike path improvements as designated now that we have our bike and pedestrian plan that's been adopted. Also some possibly some bikeway repairs. Uh, we are also in the midst of doing a sidewalk inventory citywide and developing a criteria for the need for a, a standardized criteria so that we can have start repairs over the city. And so it would also be um, potentially for some of the sidewalk repairs. The anticipated revenue from this would be $720,000 a year. The current one-tenth of a percent generates approximately $600,000 per year at this point. Um, so this point twelve, um, as an example, um, would be would mean for each ten thousand dollars of income for a person, that would be an additional twelve dollar tax per year. Um, now, what would happen is is that this it's proposed that we would potentially continue this point one two that goes on the ballot to become effective just, um, January one two thousand eleven or excuse me, 10, um, no, 11, excuse me, uh, that it would be effective for 10 years and that the 0.1% that is set to expire would expire on December 31st, 2011. So what we're talking about is that there would be a one-year overlap where there would be the current 0.1% and then we would have the additional 0.12%. Now, what... I'm bringing it up now because we, if it's agreeable to council that we move forward with this ordinance, we would need to pass the ordinance and have it finalized 90 days before the election. That would mean that if we begin readings the first week of June, that we would need to have a special session, as I mentioned earlier, in June. And as I understand from Law Director Lang, there has been some initial contact with the Secretary of State, but we may need some further clarification. Is that right? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Member Nines, that, that is correct. We had, uh, my office had been asked to, to look at this both in terms of the ballot language and whether or not this is one issue or two issues. We had communicated uh, uh, with the Secretary of State's office on that question, but then I think the question had kind of changed a little after that, so we may need to do some follow-up with them. We'd also uh, put in a call to uh, Ohio Department of Taxation on a question regarding the overlap and uh, not yet gotten an answer on that. So I, I believe that the proposal that you are putting forth here, which is to try to get a, a sense of council, uh, you know, we can as to what, what exactly council wants to do on this, and then we can nail down the, the language and make sure that we have the, the proper um, have the proper ballot language uh, to go with. And as you noted, uh, there may be so in case there's any confusion out there, typically it's 75 days prior to an election when we would have to have this language uh, certified to the Board of Elections. Uh, there's actually a, and don't quote me on this, I believe it was House Bill 28, uh, Governor Strickland just recently signed into law, and one of the components of that bill was to, uh, for tax levies in particular, to accelerate uh, that from 75 days to 90 days. So if this were introduced at first reading, the first meeting in June, uh, we would need to have at least one special session in June in order to have that pass with adequate time for the 30 days uh, before the language would need to be certified. So with an emergency clause, too. Any comments from council members? I know that there had been general support in our yes. first discussion. Um, uh, just expressing support for going ahead and getting information as it's available. Okay. Council member Bowser. Oh, I, we could certainly use, use some more funds, I think, to do work on a creature over the next couple of years, and I, I think we should move forward with this. Um, Last time you, you discussed 0.1% of that being for streets, but filling filling that role, and then the 0.02% um, being multi dedicated for multimodal or non-motorized transportation. That's correct. And based on some of the information we have from the Secretary of State's office, if we designated it and, and restricted it in those ways, the 0.1 for streets, the 0.2 for 0 0.02 for multimodal, that would mean that we would need to have two ballot issues. And at this point, um, I. 
I was just thinking common sense, maybe, or you know, general support. If I, if I, as a voter, saw two ballot issues on, I'd go immediately. Well, what's what's the second one for? Um, so there, it, this is all in general for streets. That's what uh, Law Director Lang will check for us. I think I do believe that we currently, within our street budget, do have um, monies that are used for more of a transportation, but broader kind of transportation de definition, um, and whether that's bike, pedestrian, or the uh, or the streets, and, uh, it's used in that way. It, it certainly could be more complicated to have two of them on there. I think. Um, I, I think with, with Mr. Baum's um, comments last last time we talked about this, though, uh, to ensure that those funds go where we tell the public that we want them to go, I actually personally would support two separate separate ballot issues. Okay. Thank you for the comments. Other comments? <coughs> Mayor Wall. Um, I think you may have gotten a timeline color sheet there someplace. Um, yes, I did pass that out to council okay. members. This is courtesy of Mayor Wall. In the past, yes. we did have an overlap of, I believe, two years for the streets. Um, that overlapped in the years 2002 and 2003. I, this was about when we were doing the uh, uh, East State Street widening. Um, I wasn't put on the ballot at that time. Um, the timeline also has at the last bar, of course, is what would happen if we had an overlap. We'd end up with a total tax of 0. 177 if we were to put that through. I'm sorry about the small print, but I wanted to keep it on letter size and um, keep it color coded, and that's that one page. It's very pretty. Um, again, this is just to give you an idea of what I was tracking down in terms of trying to wrap my head around what we're looking at, whether we've, what we've done before in terms of our taxes. Uh, you can see the large administration building has come and gone. You can see the green, which is the Athens Community Center, will end in 2016 for the uh, construction, but the maintenance will go on at the 0.05. Um, I, I, I guess the wording is, from my point of view, is to my concern of what we end up with. Uh, I know we want to roll over the, uh, the street rehab money, uh, which goes into the 572 fund. Um, I know that the dialogue what we're having is to try to improving our sidewalks, pedestrian, bike area. Um, to I, and I know the idea of separating it, you could end up with two, two on the ballot where somebody says, let's choose the lesser two, and we end up with a .02 total, uh, which would not help. I think anybody who's been on a street tour up late knows that about one-third of the streets that we have that uh, show needs of repair usually get repaired. And everybody has a little chestnut place that they know needs to be repaired, whether it's portions of Briarwood or Grosvenor or Franklin or um, you know Dalton or, or Jacobs or something like that. There's there's parts in the road, the street that parts of the city that need to be maintained and dealt with. Uh, I would probably uh, bring up the idea of having it rolled as one ballot uh, with the overlap of that one year, so we could actually kick in some more money. We do have. Um, the Oxbow Bridge to be doing sooner or later. Um, I know somewhere on the horizon, of course, is East State uh, 33 entrance, because I think we just got a report from ODOT. It's the next bad intersection in the city. We we'll put around it, rotary there, a roundabout, I don't think. <laughs> but the fact is that there are issues, um, you know, we have transportation issues. Personally, if I was going to do this, I'd probably put some kind of nebulous term, uh, term like transportation, but I know that doesn't really sit well with the voters. They want something very specific. Um, from my point of view, we always chuck a little money into the, trans the uh, 214 is transportation fund, the bus system. It's always running slight deficit, so we throw money in there. I wouldn't mind having that as part of the fund line, but um, that is more nebulous than sidewalks, streets, and bikeways. So these are things to think about if you want to word it. Um, and, yeah, and I wonder if we couldn't do inclusive transportation to include such items as, and then for a descriptor in it, for the ballot. I don't know. But maybe we can check into that. So to include street rehabilitation, bicycle, pedestrian, and bus transit system. OK. It's, oh, it's your decision how you want to do this. Uh, I'm just giving you my view of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I know we need the transportation. We know that we know. I know we need the streets to be maintained. I know this needs to be rolled over, um, and I know we have some that we've been trying. Grosvenor, for instance, I know uh, Andy Stone has tried at least four times for grants on this. It's just a non-starter because it's just a residential area, but it's still being. Everybody knows the condition of that. Mm -hmm. um, that to me is one of the one of my chestnuts, but that's just because I know about it and I've driven down enough to know that. Uh, 
the manhole covers still going, coming up over there all the time. I, okay, but that's all I really have to say. Yeah, you know? I would agree that, and from based on, this, on the street tour this year too, the bridges especially. Um, you know, we have four bridges that are coming up at varying stages and needing needing repairs, and those mm -hmm. are critical to getting people around the city and across the river. So, okay, thank you. All right, well, hearing no objections to it and, and general support, we'll move forward with that then um, and uh, appreciate your assistance, Law Director Lang, in getting this all clarified for us within the, within the next week. Then. Thank you very much. Second item pertains to the First Presbyterian Lease Agreement, and several of you received a copy of the correspondence, uh, I believe it was uh, shared with us last week, that the um, present lease with the First Presbyterian Church for parking spaces in the parking lots which they own expire on July 31st. So you've been getting shared with you um, tonight is a copy of the lease agreement and it would, it builds in a 3% increase. So the uh, first expense on this this coming year would be $39,393 for year one. It increases in years two and three then subsequently to $40,575 and then up to $41,792. And other than being new dates and new amounts, I believe that the lease agreement is, is the same as it has been. It is. Probably if we put this forward, we'll probably have to put more money. I suspect we didn't appropriate that much money for the rest of the year on this lease agreement. So if we do approve this, I'll have to take a look and see what kind of fund lines are in there. Okay. Yeah. Council Member Sands. Can, can somebody tell us by next week or, sure. um, what, the, um, what these lots are used for? And if, do well, we, I was hopeful we, we could. Both of them? Yes, we do. I was hopeful we could have an ordinance to start through the readings. As you can see, I'm going to miss my timeline already because July 31st, right? Mm -hmm. um, we, it's for the police uh, station yeah. and the lot that we use. Um, they retain a few spaces there at the very front, and then we also lease the other lot that we then resell, trying to offset our costs. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's, the space. that's what I was asking. I don't know anywhere else to put the police officers to tell you the truth in their patrol cars that would be, you know, monitored and what have you. So. Just trying to get some idea of what money comes in from those lots as opposed to what goes out. I can get you the, I could send that out electronically, to, like to the clerk, and she could send that out this week. Okay, we do you. not, re we certainly don't recoup up to $40,000. It's more in the twenty six, twenty eight thousand dollars $28,000 to kind of offset. No, the, the, the police officers, the vehicles need to be right there. Parked somewhere adjacent to the law. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Council Member Gossett. Just along the same lines, I guess, you know, the, the number of spaces, how much we pay for each space, and if it might be more beneficial for the city to break that up and just rent the one that is actually contiguous with the police station itself. If, it, depending on on how the math works out, you know, if we're leasing for three hundred and, and paying five hundred, we might want to look at trying to negotiate not needing as many spaces. Got it. Okay. And I, I might add that this is um, the clerk of council found out for me that this is an agreement that's been in existence since 70, 1973. So. It, it's worth looking at some of the details of that. Okay, under the miscellaneous, we have two items, um, one of which uh, is brought to you by Mayor Weil tonight, and this has to do with capital expenditures. And this is the second handout behind the colored graph that was given to you. It's a chart for the 2010 capital project budget. This is our projected capital budget for the uh, Athens Transit System, our bus system inside the city. Uh, what we had scheduled, of course, is a replacement bus, uh, light transit bus, that's that LTV. Um, this was in our program. We, we got ahead with the one bus with the um, stimulus package. The other two pieces of our shop equipment, it's an AC refrigerant handler. If you look at the, uh, the um, 
dialogue on the back there, basically. Uh, the one we have is basically about 10 years old, in bad shape. Um, this is what recaptures the Freon, I believe, when you, when you change the air conditioning uh, refrigerant. Um, and the other one, of course, is an automatic transmission fluid exchange system, and that needs to be renovated to or built up. But, uh, um, actually, I don't think we have one of these. I think this is new. Um, this, these are what we programmed into our capital budget for this year. We get 90% uh, of the cost uh, covered. 10% of it would be ours we put in. If you look at the total amounts, about 77,000 when all said and done. Uh, of that, about 7,700 we have to put up for that. Um, essentially, I'll, I'll probably need authorization to go ahead and start this rolling if we choose to do that. And that's really why I just wanted to bring it up to your attention. Uh, I can talk about it more at a later date. Um, <coughs> I know some discussion as to whether we should try for an alternative fuel bus. Uh, we'll try and find out a little bit more about that because uh, I don't think there's any. I think Paul Oak, who having gone to the uh, Hawking College's uh, Energy uh, Center Research Center, was impressed by the compressed natural gas. But I don't think there's a real outlet here. On the other hand, there's always propane as well. So there's different aspects to look at. But I just mentioned to us so you know that this is what we look in our capital budget for this year. Um, I did not put these in just because I was trying to keep the budget low. But we'll look at it when the time comes. But I, I, essentially, I'd like authorization of that in the room. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Last item is brought to us by um, our mobility manager person, staff person, Lance Rep, and he wanted to remind everyone and we'll make a series of announcements and hopefully work with the mayor about a press release for Dump the Pump Day. It's the fifth annual event. It's sponsored by the American Public Transportation Association. And so that'll be happening June 17th this year. Save money, ride the transit is the uh, public work. And so we'll be trying to get some more publicity out about that. Okay, any other miscellaneous transportation items? Not transportation, but council overall, I want to make sure everybody realizes next week we will not be meeting due to the Memorial Day holiday. We have none scheduled on Tuesday at this point. So we are meeting or not meeting? We are not meeting. June not, okay, because it's the fifth Monday. <laughs> you can come. You, can you have no other place to go, do you? <laughs> Is that uh, everything? We've been adjourned.